If you have seen the new Spider-Man movie, you probably wondered about the art and how can you add some of the elements from this movie into your own art. So let's look at a few things that you can do today and add into your art right now to make your paintings pop more and make it more like the Spider-Verse movie. So you can start your painting as usual with a sketch and, a, and the drawing part. And I wanted to draw Miguel O'Hara from the movie. And one thing that uh, the art of the movie does very well and has taught me very well is the power of simplicity. Simplicity in art is really your friend and you can have a lot of things very simple and still be extremely appealing and amazing. But let's not talk too much about the sketch phase or the drawing phase and let's just jump into the different parts that you can do during the coloring and painting phase to add style to your painting. So one of the things that I noticed that the Spider-Verse movie does well is the use of different color lights from different angles. And it gives certain mood and effect. And just generally the bold color choice of lights that they use really gives certain moods for certain scenes and dynamics. So to do this and start practicing it, and if you're not really comfortable using different lights all the time, divide the painting that you have or, or the character that you have into half. And then you can treat the right side with one color and the left side with another color. So the way I did it was to try and do a cool color on one side and then a warmer color on the other side. So you can see I added the pink or purple color on the left side and then added the yellow or orange color on the right side. So now to make this work well, I started with the base color as a normal skin color. This can be any color, it doesn't have to be skin color, but it's good to have a base color before you add the different colors. And the reason for that is it will add some color variation into your painting. Because if you just start with just the light color, you will not have any color variation in your painting and then maybe the light will, will feel too harsh. You can still do it, but I like to do it this way because then it adds some color variation, especially in the parts that you want to blend in the, at the center where you want to blend in the two different colors it's easier because there's a there's the undertone there that you can you can blend with so just a note when i do the shadows i like to go a little bit darker and more saturated to add those colors in and don't be afraid to th that if your hue or if your actual color is a little bit off every time you choose so if you go if, for example you're trying to do the yellow side or the orange side don't be afraid to move a little bit towards the red or move a little bit up towards the yellow to give it a little bit of color variation so then you can just spend some time and just render more and more using these colors and you can just keep color picking and keep rendering and blending more and more then the next trick that i wanted to say is to add the halftone effect in different areas they go very well in areas where there's lots of highlights or rim light where you can add that effect. After you add that effect, you simply create a new file, make it 100 by 100 pixel. Using the shape tool, just create a circle in the middle of your, of your canvas. You can select everything and then just center the circle. And then you go to edit, define pattern, and then you just give it a name. And now you just suddenly have this, uh, this this thing that this pattern they can use so in your own painting you can just select the hard round brush and then go to the brush settings and then you go to texture and then at the top you select the pattern that you just made and then you can just play around with the depth and the scale sliders until you get the pattern size that you want and you're just ready to use this this thing so you can see simple few steps you have this pattern all the time that's available to you and you can just select it and just use it and add it to those areas of light and highlight and rim light to give it that effect now the other thing that the movie does very well and a lot is chromatic aberration and chromatic aberration is when one of the channels is shifted a little bit so one of the color channels is shifted a little bit and it gives that kind of effect to it and they use it to relay depth sometimes or movement and they use it just uh, to to do a certain certain scenes and certain effects so to do that there's a couple different ways so i'll just show you uh, two ways here the first way is you can just duplicate the layer for example of the character 
you can shift it a little bit so you can nudge it for example let's say to the right a couple times and up and then you can double click on the layer and then this comes up the channels you can select which channels you want to be shown or removed so for example if we just remove the green you can see that that chromatic aberration is there and then if you don't want it to be on the whole thing you can just you can just erase the parts for example let's say the face you don't want that effect there and you just want it on the edges so you can just erase the parts so another way of doing it you have your lay you have your painting the character first of all you can just select everything select your character by clicking control and selecting on your layer and then it does the selection tool on your whole character and then you go to the channel section let's say we want to remove or move the green so you click click green it selects it and then click there so that all the channels can be seen and then you can go on the move and then you can nudge it a bit and then you can see that effect so it does it does give two different effects but this is really how you do it so you can go for example on the red and then move it the other way if you wanted to it gives more you can play around more and more with it, it does extreme things and then you can go back because this was on one layer the suggestion would be to make a duplicate before so then you can do the same thing come in and erase the parts that you you don't want another easy and simple thing to is to add some line art back into your paintings at the end this is very important because a lot of times we try and really render and spend a lot of time trying and perfect something with rendering while it can be simplified with just a simple line one simple line can save you so much time and effort and it and it relays the message a lot more so for example at the chin here i wanted it to really be defined so i just went back in and added some uh, some line art to make it make that definition if you want to see more detailed analysis of the Spider-Verse art and my city landscape painting in this style, you can watch this video next.